So they're wrong. Apple should be forced to turn over the device's auto-erase functions, allowing the government to submit test passcodes to the phone without the risk of destroying the data it seeks. And I would say that Tim Cook should be held in contempt of court and go to jail. They should bring one of these creeps finally to heel. You know, none of them are above the law. There's no reason Tim Cook should not be immediately found in contempt of court and thrown into prison to force Apple to comply. Am I right or wrong? Should Tim Cook of Apple be forced to help law enforcement track down those who are on the terrorist phones? Because you know that that phone has other people's numbers that want to blow things up and kill people. So in this case, Apple is now working with the terrorists. Tim Cook is a dirtball. Tim Cook is not doing this for the sake of privacy. He's doing it to preserve a product that is owned by Apple. That's the only reason he's doing it. He's simply protecting a proprietary trademarked encryption device or codes. And in doing so, he's aiding terrorists. Am I right or wrong? That's another topic that I want Jim to get calls on. Jim, put in some calls on Tim Cook sleazeball. Put in some callers who agree or disagree with me on whether Tim Cook should be held in contempt of court and if he doesn't help the government, be thrown in jail. Now, he will not help the government. I'll tell you why. He's another friend of Obama. Did you know that? He, didn't Obama just visit Tim Cook? Didn't Tim Cook just visit Obama? End the story. Above the law. So even though the FBI wants the ability to, to break into that phone, what do you think uh, the golfer is going to do? What do you think the golfer is going to do with this one? 855 KSFO, Ben, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Yeah, Mike, I have to disagree with you on this one. I, I have to agree with Tim Cook um, in not wanting to help the FBI. Regardless of whatever the federal judge says, um, had, had, had this, if this case goes to the Supreme Court, had Scalia lived to hear it, I think Scalia would have agreed with Tim Cook and said, hey, um, the Constitution doesn't force the government uh, to give up proprietary uh property. And um, in past shows that you have broadcasted, you yourself had, had complained about the government's overreach already, the abuse of power. Yeah, but you're, but you're making it too broad. I'll be Scalia right now. Your statement makes sense if it was a broad statement that Apple has to now uh, eliminate this encryption on all phones. and That's not what the court order says. The court order is very limited to this specific phone. Mike, the government has lied in past cases. I no, mean, no, no. Let's stop with the generic. This court order is limited only to the terrorist phone, nothing else. It's limited in its scope. It is not a broad statement that all phones encryption must be turned over to the government at all. That's a false argument, my friend. Thank you for the call. So there it is. I just had to put on my legal hat. No, the only reason Tim Cook is not complying with the judge's order is because he wants to hold on for greedy reasons, in my opinion. That's what it is. This is a very, very big story. Because the federal government is trying to find out where these Muslims were between the time of the attack at the Inland Regional Center the morning of December 2nd and their deaths in a wild firefight with police hours later. The FBI asked for the pub's, public's health in filing an 18, filling in an 18-minute gap in the narrative of the couple's whereabouts. Nobody knows. But they know that if they can get into the phone with the help of the slimeball Tim Cook, they may find out who they were communicating with. That would break the case wide open. What other Muslim terrorists are waiting to strike, Tim? Tim, for one minute, Tim Cook, if you're listening, or your flack who is recording me is listening, Tim, the world is waiting to hear why you're aiding and abetting terrorists in this case under the guise of protecting privacy. Tim, we demand to know you're not helping America. You're hurting America, in our opinion. I'll be back. You know, this whole issue about Scalia's death is really about privacy, isn't it? Many of you are arguing, leave it alone, he's a private individual, he has a right to do what he was doing. Well, no, he's a public figure, we have a right to know. Especially since the president immediately jumped in and said he's going to railroad a left-wing fanatic onto the Supreme Court. He said that. He was asked yesterday, would you appoint a moderate? He said, no, well, what gave you that idea? 
So right away that adds suspicion, fuel to the fire. If Obama himself were a kind, benevolent man politically, we wouldn't even be asking these questions, but he's not. That's number two. It's about privacy in one way, but it isn't in another way. And then there's the issue of Apple opposes order to help FBI unlock a phone belonging to San Bernardino. Shoot, shooter, excuse me, pardon me. Another privacy issue, right? And many of you are knee-jerk liberals or knee-jerk libertarians are saying, no, Savage, you're wrong. You should not let the government break the encryption. Tim Cook is right. Well, you're not seeing the whole picture. The whole picture is this. The motion was written by a judge, number one, in a 40-page motion to the judge. The judge wrote Apple as the exclusive technical means which would assist the government in completing its search but has declined to provide the assistance voluntarily. That's number one. Number two, Apple has a policy of requiring law enforcement to obtain search warrants or subpoenas before aiding in investigations, which the government did. And by the way, you should know this. The motion of the judge said that Apple routinely complies with law enforcement when presented with a search warrant or judicial order. So the answer, the question is, why is Tim Cook and Apple now taking the side of the terrorists, in my opinion? They normally comply with the law enforcement when presented with search warrant. Why not in this case? What are they hiding? See, this is another story here. I believe both Facebook and Apple have grown too big, and I believe that there should be antitrust actions brought against them by the next president. I believe that Google, Apple, and Facebook need to be broken up. Bust the trusts. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. like this well he passed away what a great man he was but the thing is is that people do need a relief from the, the world we live in you take an ordinary life in the world that we're living in the pressures that we're all under day and night what should I eat what I shouldn't eat how much sleep do I get how much sex why well, can I have more sex less sex how much money do I have I'm not money this money life insurance a pot you can go crazy from it so people seek relief so they take a drink or they have a, a joint they run they windsurf, whatever they do. Now add to that a demonic president who is out to destroy our freedoms, a de demonic corrupt administration that knows no bounds to its greed. I saw a movie the other night again, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre with Humphrey Bogart. Maybe you've seen it. And it's about what gold does to men. You know, two down and out white guys and an old man go on a, go looking for gold up in the hills of the Sierra Madre. And what happens when they find gold, what happens to their minds and their, their souls, what gold does to them. You look no further than the Senate or Congress and see what gold does to people. You see how corrupt they are, how evil they become, right? I mean, it's unbelievable to me what we're watching here. It's all about greed, isn't it? When you think about it, what is Obama's madness about? It's a lust for power, nothing else. He's not personally benefiting in the way that a corrupt president would. Those, those days are over anyway where they personally gain from the, uh, you know, their actions. It's a power madness that you could never understand. And although the film, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, dealt with what gold does to men's souls, oh, what movies have dealt with the issue of what power does to men's souls, the madness, the madness it, 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 it inflicts upon people. The power madness is the greatest disease of our time. Because today you talk about corporations have too much power, or uh, banks are too big. I, mean, I would say that the government is far too big, as we all know. That's, that's just a homily today. But what does that actually mean? What does it actually mean the government is too big? Well, it means that companies like Apple and Facebook, which are more powerful than the government, are not even complying with the federal law enforcement officials who want to break into a phone used by the terrorists in San Bernardino, the Muslims who went on a shooting spree. They were given a court order. They normally comply with court orders. So what is he doing now? What is Tim Cook doing now? Why is he not complying? If you think it's for your per, uh, uh, privacy, you're wrong, in my opinion. Lauren's calling from WABC. Go ahead and make your point, Lauren. You have a good point. Uh, 
uh, yeah, uh, they, they, they uh, basically uh, pay their bills, the terrorists. So if they don't uh, unlock this phone, then the phone to get is uh, Apple. So in other words, if Tim Cook continues to stonewall the government and not comply with the federal order to give them the codes to break into that particular phone, not all phones, this will become the most popular phone amongst uh, terrorists worldwide. Run out and get one, sure, because they pay their bills. Maybe they should get. Maybe they should get an Arabic version, where the keys and uh, everything else are, are, you know, made specifically for the use by terrorists who were setting off a bomb with the other hand. Maybe they can make a special iPhone that doesn't require uh, two hands to operate. You know, makes it. E you can be done with one hand now. I get it, one thumb. But they can make it easier than that. Maybe they could do it with voice technology. Like, Ahmed, I'm here in the supermarket now. Are you near the, the mall? Are the children coming out of school from the Catholic school? Yes, Mohammed. All right, when I count to three, all you're going to do is say three and the bomb will go off. Maybe Tim could work on that technology with some of the whiz kids from San Francisco. All of the soulless ghouls who board buses on Mission Street to go create more garbage, more toys for the, for the idiots. Don't get me started on these people. They're the robber barons of our time, in my opinion. I love people talk about it, the 1890s, Rockefeller, all the great fortunes. They were the robber barons. You're telling me these are not robber barons? You're telling me they're not too big for, their, for the sake of America? No, I, and that's a whole topic for another day, which is should these companies be broken up? I hear Bernie Sanders every day attacking banks. Every day saying they're too big, they need to be broken up, and he's copying uh, like he invented it. Teddy Roosevelt. I know bust the trust. I've seen the embroidery. I'm a student of history. Well, we have corporations today that are far bigger than, than uh, U.S. Steel was, far bigger than the railroads ever were in their heyday. And I believe that a just government would look into antitrust actions against several companies in this country. Some of them are bigger than the government, more powerful than the government. And now you have a guy who's so arrogant, Tim Cook, that he will not even help the FBI unlock the phone belonging to the Muslim shooters in San Bernardino. I don't believe that this is overreach by the U.S. government for two reasons. One, because it's limited to this phone. That's number one. But number two, this was a company phone. This wasn't even his private phone. Did you know that? This was given to him by the county of San Bernardino uh, because he worked for them. So it's a company phone. That's, number, that's really the most important point. And the company has agreed with this. So it's Tim Cook. Who is the problem here? Meaning Apple, the greedy Apple company. Tech giant. Tech giant is now working for the terrorists, in my opinion. And people now have to pressure Apple to comply with the federal government because we don't know who else is waiting to kill us, in plain English. Do you agree or disagree with me? And we're also still talking about Scalia's hunting trip, which was a gift from a friend who had business before the Supreme Court last year. Robert, did you find that other song yet? El Camino de la Vida, that's such a great song, the Mexican song. El Camino de la Vida. If this keeps up, I'll start singing in Spanish. I'll really blow the audience away. I may have to break into song if, if necessary. Not right now, a little later. I don't have the lyrics in front of me. I love that song. That's a song to sing after you have, if you have a driver and you've had three drinks. That's when you put your arm around the uh, busboys and the, and the waiters and start singing El Camino with, de la Vida with them, and you'll find out what, what heart really is. I get along very well with, <laughs> with people, but uh, we'll, we won't talk about that. What I love about this business is the misinterpretation of talk show hosts. You know, who you think I am as opposed to who I really am emotionally, and who you think are the good guys who behind the scenes are the worst people on the planet. I'm not naming anyone, and I won't name anyone. People who come across as your best friend, they're not your best friend. But I don't want to even talk about that because they're not our problem. Our problem is the cover-up of Scalia's uh, passing, and our problem is Apple opposing in order to help the FBI unlock the phone belonging to the San Bernardino, sh San Bernardino shooter. These are the two things. Now, before we move on to the callers, somebody emailed me something that I know you're all thinking, and they're saying, why is the family not, you know, demanding an investigation? See? Then another one's saying, look, Michael, there is a simple explanation for this that has nothing to do with Obama and it's called the Rockefeller scenario Nelson the Nelson Rockefeller scenario you know that one right I, I don't want to go into we don't you see we're speculating a little too much here 
The Nelson Rockefeller scenario is a 